The curse continues for the Toronto Raptors as they lose to Dwayne Casey and the Detroit Pistons again. The Raptors have not beaten the Detroit Pistons now since January of 2020. It's insane. And there's so many narratives coming out of this game. I mean, you could talk about, you know, Gary Trent's abysmal shooting night. You could talk to miss free throws late by Precious. You could talk about the inability to play defense really at all in the, fir in the first three quarters of this game. There's so many different ways you can look at this game. But I look at it as the inability to shoot the basketball. Yeah, you didn't play well in the first three frames. You really didn't. However, if you were knocking down some shots, you at least would have stayed in the game. And they did great in the second quarter. But that was it. Until you needed some desperation stuff near the end. Let's get to this game. First quarter, abysmal. I mean, they can't make shots to save their life. The defensively, they were flat out terrible. I mean, albeit they were making a few tough shots in that first quarter. But either way, you're down 31-22 to the Pistons in the first, after one quarter of play. You got to turn it up. And they do. In the second quarter, Raptors win it by 6, 35-29. I believe they got the buzzer beater three at the end of the quarter by Gary Trent to make it a three-point game. You're right there. It's a one-possession game at halftime. And then you go out in the third, and not only can you not defend, but you can't score to save your life in that quarter. You know, we're getting to the latter part of the third. You're down by 18. Like, it is bad. You end up losing that quarter by 11, 31-20. And you're down 14 going into the fourth. You need a miracle. And you start to get some because, because Scotty Barnes takes over and starts making a ton of shots in that fourth quarter. I mean, I thought the energy picked up, but I'm like, it's a little too late. You're down by 14 going into the fourth. Now, they do win that quarter by 12, but you lose by two. We can break down that fourth quarter all we want, right? We can break down the defensive mistakes. We can, not, we can talk about how Gary just continued to, sh to take tough shots and miss shots. And even when he was getting the wide open looks, he was not knocking them down. And then let's fast forward here to when this game got real close near the end. Precious has a chance to tie the game late with a couple free throws, and he misses one. And then let's fast forward again, right? To, uh, who was it coming down with? Sadiq Bey had the ball at the three-point line. Chris Boucher's on him. You, you, all, you guys always know I'm not a huge Chris Boucher fan. He's been playing great this season, learning his role. But the one thing that has still not wavered is the inability to stay down on the perimeter. Sadiq Bey's out there at the three-point line. He doesn't fake. He doesn't do anything. He's dribbling, looking around. And Boucher, maybe he did a little look, but Boucher flies out there uh, looking for the block. And Sadiq's like, oh, I'm just going to drive on you now. He drives, gets the tough shot to go to make it a three-point game. You just, all you had to do, keep the man in front of you, keep your feet down, stay down. Keep him in front because he was. You have the length there. Just contest the shot if he's going to shoot it. Right? And it's just an absolute... Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. And... They get out of that three-point lead. Which breaks our hearts. And then you get that... The, the ball inbound, right? Because you have the timeout. You, you move the ball up, right? And I believe they had 14 on the clock, I believe. And Gary Trent Jr. gets the inbound play. Or no, sorry, Siakam was the inbounder. It goes into Scotty Press. I can't remember who got the inbound. But they give it to Gary. And I'm thinking to myself, at this point in time, he has been abysmal. He's missed like four straight shots. He has not shot the ball well all night long. Meanwhile, Pascal's in here shooting 10 of 15 from the field and has 28 in the game. And does not touch the ball. Maybe he does quickly. Maybe pass. Yeah, because Pascal was in the inbounder. But he doesn't get the ball back. 
And Gary ends up, I don't know if he was looking for the three, he got inside and tried to lay it off the backboard, but it got denied. Scotty goes back to try and get the three because he knows the clock's running out, takes the shot, error balls it, Precious gets fouled at the free throw, or fouled, and you need to make one, the, preferably the first one, miss the second, and just pray to God to get a little tip in. Well, he does exactly that. He makes the first, misses the second intentionally, but it goes too far wide that there's no tip in and you lose by two. Or no, sorry. My math is totally off. Well, they lost by two, 108, 106. They're looking for the tie. Right, that, that's what I was going for there. So I, th I think I was right there with my math. But you guys know, my math has never been my strong suit at all. And you lose by two. So that was kind of like the final minute of, of craziness that I witnessed. Again, I could be overreacting on some things. I could be wrong about the Boucher uh, jump out, but I just don't know why you jump out in that situation in a game where you're up, where you're down by, was it one? I believe you were down by one at the time. You get that stop, you come the other way. You have a chance to take the lead here. Or even if it was two, you have a, tie, you have a chance to tie or take the lead. You're, you're like, you're right there. I, I believe it was a one point game. So he jumps. The blow by, they get the two, and now you need some sort of miracle and you don't get it. Let's get to these player stats. We're going to start with Gary Trent. Because as I mentioned, he got that last, he, he, if, you, if you want to count that as the last shot, I mean, obviously took Scotty took the three and Precious had the free throws. But he was the option, I guess, on that inbound play that they were drawing it up for. Gary Trent ends the game with 14 points, two rebounds, and four assists. He shot 4 of 23, 17% from the field, 3 of 3 from the line, 3 of 15 from three-point range. He had two steals in the game. And that's the man taking the last shot to tie, the, actually, even the layup wouldn't even have tied it, it would have made it a one-point game. That's tough, man. Meanwhile, Scotty Barnes and Pascal did an incredible job tonight. You know, maybe, maybe drawing up a play for those guys. I know Pascal was in the inbound, but maybe you wanted Scotty on the inbound, right? And get Pascal the rock because he's hot. Scotty ends the game 21 points, 10 boards, couple assists. It's some fantastic performances lately from Scotty. Wins Rookie of the Month. Well deserved for the young fella. Boosting that stock for Rookie of the Year, eh? I don't know. We'll have to see. But 7 of 13 from the field, 6 of 10 from the free throw line, 1 of 3 from distance. He was spectacular. He was a big reason of why this Raptors, Raptors team even gave that little bit of comeback, but he was really one of the key cogs for keeping them in the game. Had a steal and a block, did Scotty tonight. Pascal Siakam, as I mentioned, maybe he's the guy who I understand in the past, you know, he hasn't been all that clutch and whatnot. But 28, 5, and 2 on 10 of 15 shooting, 8 of 10 in line, he hadn't taken a 3 to this point. But I'm, it just pains me that Gary's the one that took that shot. I know I've said in the past, no matter how he's shooting, you know, you always kind of feel confident in the guy because of what he can do. He's always got the confidence in himself. I get that. But 4 of 23 and 3 of 15 from 3 in, in the biggest moment of the game, that's tough. And especially since it didn't work out at all. He didn't even really get the shot off. He got denied. And it was a 2 and it was just kind of an ugly possession. So do you maybe look at it as like, well, maybe we should draw something up for Scotty or Pascal because those guys were our guys in this game. They did not take that shot. So that's the part I'm thinking. I don't know about you guys. You guys can think totally different. That's totally fine. That's why you guys have the comment section to go nuts about. Malachi Flynn offensively didn't do a bad job. Defensively, though, royally struggled. It was that starting unit early on that really, really struggled. Minus 18 in the game for Malachi, but did have 11 points, three boards, and an assist on four of six shooting. It was one of one from the line and two of three from distance. So he made some shots, but he really, really struggled on the other end of the ball. And, and, and that's something that, again, we all talked about, right? We talked about in the last video how, you know, Patty Mills and Seth Curry is a much better matchup for him tonight. Not so much. And he did, and he, it definitely showed. Now, it's a little bump in the road. Yeah, but his shots were still falling. So you, you got to play the kid, right? And so he did a good job there. Precious at you, I know people are going to razz him for the free throw shooting. But you know what? He's a damn big reason of why this team actually made that comeback late in this game. If he made that free throw to tie the game with about, what, 30 odd seconds left? Something like that? It'd be a lot different. Maybe, actually, like, would it have made it? Yeah, it would have tied the game. It might have changed the outcome. 
But the man did give you 18 points and seven boards on six of 13 shooting was five of nine from the line. And that's something that, again, throughout the offseason, throughout all this stuff, he will get better. Was one of three from three-point range. He did a great job tonight. Missed a free throw in a big moment, which really hurts. But he made such a huge impact in this game. I apologize that again, fellas. Boucher. The stats don't suggest he had a terrible game. Five points and ten boards. And two of four shooting. But that jump out, it hunts me. Because it is something that is, it has plagued him his entire career. And it is something that I have said quite a few, quite a few times in my videos that makes me want to pull my hair out half the time. Look, when you block a guy taking a three like that, it, look, it looks great. It gets the crowd hyped. I get that. But in a moment like that, you don't care about hyping up a crowd or blocking a shot. Keep the man in front of you, contest the shot. And that's, that's what he didn't do in that. He jumped, the guy blew by him and gave him the three point lead. It's tough, man. It's really tough in those big moments when, especially when it's that type of moment and he's the one-on-one -on -one guy with Sadiq Bey. It's really tough, but it's something that definitely stands out and it really hurts. Now, team stats. We can talk about specifics because we can talk about the last minute and what happened, but in the end, Detroit shot 45% from the field and 30% from three and 75% from the free throw line. That, that is not very good. I mean, there's nothing special. The Raptors shot 43% from the field and 27% from three-point range and 75% from the line. But not only did they shoot 27% from three, they only took 26 threes. I mean, that is a, such a low number. But with, with, with Fred out, with, with OG out, I mean... Those numbers are not going to be up there. But they had seven makes. Seven. They had 11, I believe. Either way, you know, they took a lot more threes, as, as most teams do. You know, and this leads to another point why Gary Trent Jr., especially since the All-Star break, really hasn't been clicking so much. When you don't have Fred and you don't have OG, you need, 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 that shooting from somewhere else. And Gary and Fred have been the two guys who have been, you know, the, the top, top of the league and makes this season, like near the top at least. And with Fred out, you need Gary to make his threes consistently and efficiently. Tonight was not the night. Seven makes in the game is tough. It really, really is. Malachi had two. Precious had one. I believe Scotty had one. Yeah, so Scotty had one as well. They really struggled. And seven threes, at seven of 26, that's not many threes. And you also look at the field goal attempts. The Raptors are so used to being 90, 91 plus on the season average in that range. They did like 85 tonight. And we know, we've talked about it so many times, how this team is not um, an efficient shooting team. They're a volume shooting team. They, 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 they work the glass, right? They crash the offensive glass. That's get, the, get those extra points uh, off the offensive boards. That's what this team is so, so that prides themselves on. Tonight you didn't have, you only took 80, I, think, I believe it was 85 field goals. That is much lower than what you're used to. And that's, a, you, you're bound to make one or two of those. And unfortunately you'll get those opportunities. So there's a lot of different moving parts and factors to this loss tonight. Also minus 13 and it says 25 to 12. The team had 12 assists in the game tonight. I mean, it's just not pretty. They didn't really have it. It's, it's crazy how they were even in the game late. And it's just, it's heartbreaking about how this game ended. Right? Every possession seemed like some sort of breakdown. With Precious missing a free throw. With Boucher jumping out. With me scratching my head about why Gary was taking that shot. It just did not feel right. And these games are going to happen. And it also doesn't help that, that the, you, had, you had no Thad Young tonight. People are going to be like, well, Thad... Uh, have you not seen the impact over the last few games that Thad has made? They closed the game with Thad in the last one against Brooklyn. They closed the game with him. Tells you the confidence and the way he was performing. You did not have him tonight. It was a non-COVID related il illness. So that's a tough loss, especially when you don't have Fred and OG and Gary and guys are not, are not clicking. It's a tough one. Now, the next game for the Raptors, because I want to move on from this nonsense because we still can't beat Dwayne Casey. All right. You got the Orlando Magic next. Two of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. Actually, you know what? The worst two teams in the Eastern Conference. Both teams going into today had 15 wins. 
30 combined. The Raptors had 34 as a team. You just lost it to the Pistons, but we all know that's an automatic look. Please do not lose to Orlando. Battle back. Get a W. Friday night on home court. 7.30 tip off. You need a victory. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and not the ending to this game tonight, smack the like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. If you guys are not already, comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game? Tip for the Toronto Raptors. The uh, Twitter link is down below. So follow up, send me a DM to like great stuff. The Instagram link is also down there. So follow up there. If you guys have not done so already, I will talk to you guys at Leafs edition tomorrow. And my God, the Raptors just lost to Detroit. The Leafs just lost to Buffalo. It, the Toronto sports right now are in shambles. <laughs> Flat out shambles. And there's no baseball right now. It can't get anything right. Hopefully, and I hope and pray, the Leafs can figure it out tomorrow. I forget who the heck they play. No, they don't play tomorrow. They play Saturday. Vancouver at home, Scotiabank Arena. Please get the two points in regulation. Wouldn't that be nice? But if they win that in regulation, I'm wearing a bucket because it seems like they bounce back after I wear that damn thing. After the Toronto Raptors, I don't want to have to wear that. But if they lose to Orlando, you bet your rear that is going on my head. Friday, 7.30 tip-off. Actually, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, 7.30. Holy smokes. Back-to-back. -back. You got Orlando at home. 7.30 tip off. Please get the victory tomorrow against Orlando. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and not the game tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.